Hello, my name is Derek Saborn, and I'm here in the Rolla Public Library. Today, in cooperation with the Phelps County Historical Society, we get to explore some of Rolla's history, as well as the history of Phelps County in Missouri. We're going to look at some of the old Dillon Log House, and we're going to look at the old courthouse, and some of the artifacts that are preserved in those two buildings. The Phelps County Historical Society does some great work in terms of preserving these old buildings and also preserving the artifacts inside them. We're going to talk about some of Rolla's history, some of the history of these buildings, and we're also going to look at, if you're interested, how to join the Phelps County Historical Society as a member. I hope you enjoyed the video that follows, and if you're interested in learning more about Rolla history, you can always come here to the library where we have books about Missouri history and even books about Rolla history. For example, we have Rolla the Old Town by John F. Bradbury Jr. And this is a great book. In fact, you can even see a picture of the old Phelps County Courthouse in, in, on the back of this book. And there's a lot of great pictures in here of Rolla in the old days. Um, from all different time periods and it's just a great book there's a lot of pictures and there's some good facts and historical context that this book provides and you can also check out a book titled the story of Rolla Missouri by dr. and mrs. Claire Van Mann and this book has some good written information it's also got pictures but there's a lot more um, there's a lot more writing in this book but you'll find a lot of good historical context for photos they do put in here and it even has some interesting information about the history of this library. So enjoy the video that follows. There's some really cool stories ahead and we hope to see you here in the library so that you can explore more about the history of Missouri and of Rolla. Well, we're standing in front of the Dillon Log House, the importance of which is in 1857 when the county was first formed, Phelps County was first organized. The first county court, what we now call the county commission, met in this house, but it wasn't here. It was about three or four miles east of here along the Springfield Road toward what's now St. James. St. James didn't exist either. Rolla didn't exist. But this large house did, the Dillon House in the Dillon community. And the people in Dillon assumed that Dillon would become the county seat of the new county of Phelps. Didn't work out that way. <coughs> and it just <coughs> kind of withered away to, to nothing. People actually lived in this house. It was sided over uh, into the 1960s. And then when they left, it was given to the Historical Society, taken apart in fairly large sections and moved on big trucks here. And the county allows, well, the county owns this land, but allows the Dillon House to be on it. So we have right here, right in this vicinity, what people, people call it the first courthouse of Phelps County. It was never actually a courthouse where circuit court was held. But we have the Dillon House, the old courthouse, and the new courthouse all right together, representing about 100 and, almost 170 years of history. And the, the house itself, we don't have an exact date on it. We've estimated, whoops, we've estimated 1830s. That might be a little early, but it was definitely, it was on the Springfield Road, and which made it important, and it's very large for its day. So we suspect it might have been an inn of some sort where travelers could spend the night. We haven't found any verification of that either. We, we keep <laughs> hoping to find a letter from somebody saying we stayed at the Dillon house last night and really liked, really enjoyed it, but we haven't, that have not surfaced. So we, it is now the Phelps County Museum. Melody and Mark offered me and my trusty camera a tour through the old Dillon log house. Of course, I could not refuse. One of the first objects we were greeted by was a long and heavy counter. It's been there for a long time, and they're not quite sure how it was originally moved into the cabin. This 
huge count who came from the dentist store in downtown Valla. I have yet to find anybody who can tell me how they got it in here. This whole this big wow. counter? Yeah, it's all one piece yeah. in here. It's all one piece. So we're kind of thinking when they, Maybe they built brought the it over, they built it around it. Yeah, they just built it. <laughs> yeah, we built the cabin around it. I don't know. But we don't know. It's amazing. Each room in the cabin had a selection of artifacts representing Missouri and Rolla history. So this was a broom maker? Yes, this was a homemade broom. Homemade broom maker. Broom making machine. Yeah. And yeah, it's so, not quite a working order, but not too far off. No, it, it could be. It's pretty cool. The guy who had it, he, he did it right up. So that, that would make, this would make uh, brooms, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. yeah. They cut the flax into length and then it, there's one on there. Yeah, you put, a, put a handle on it and then it shows where it would tighten the wire. Away. There's the wire would it's come out the of there and you can cut the wire and bind it around. Just one guy in his bar, I mean, and you go to him for brooms. Organizing and presenting the artifacts in their collection is an ongoing project. For the folks at the Phelps County Historical Society, the goal is to present the objects in a way that tells a story. I'm going to move in fewer items, but... Better, better descriptions. More, more, mm -hmm. yeah, more, make it more educational. Rather than just, rather than just have it look like somebody's basement. Right. We want it to be an educational experience. Right. Some of the artifacts also have some interesting stories in and of themselves. One such example is that of the gravestone, nicknamed Tombstone Fred. Tombstone, and that we're not going to have it for much longer. We deciphered the name on it. It's Henry Boyer. Mm -hmm. And so we checked with the Genealogical Society, and they said that He's buried in Rolla Cemetery, but his stone is missing. Well, he said, well, it's not, we missing. Got the stone. not missing anymore. <laughs> so, so we contacted the city. The city owns the cemetery. And they will come and get it and reset the stone. They knew that he was there. They had a record of it. Huh. They just didn't have the stone. Wow. And at some point, it was stolen or something. And it broken. ended up here. And ended up up here, and it sat here for... As long as I can remember. Yeah, it's been so here. decades, probably. Yeah. We had okay. Fifteen years ago, the Girl Scout troops made a, an inventory. So we didn't ever had a catalog. The Girl Scouts made an inventory of everything, most everything, with a picture made with the camera not near that good. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and these are what twelve. 13 year old girls. They didn't know what a lot of stuff was either. Well, they looked at this tombstone and they saw this part Died. here. And it looked like. They decided that was Fred. Fred. <laughs> Actually, it said died. We figured that out. Henry Boyer is up here. Yeah, the names on the. With his, with his dates. He was a young man. He was. Yeah, 17, he wasn't that old. 17 yeah. years old, so we've, some month, three months, so and we've, 15 uh, days. So. so, ever since then, we've called the Tombstone Fred. Yeah. <laughs> but we knew it's going to be. It's going to be removed and going to be put back in the Wall Cemetery where it belongs. And the, the casket, we've gone back and forth on this. Whether, it's a, whether it was a a model uh, or a, a child? A salesman's or? model, but, but the thing says on here, says our darling. Oops. There's some critters up here that you don't want to. Yeah. So, apparently it's a child's casket. Yeah. But there's no, there's no child steps. in there. After leaving the Dillon Log House, we walked over to the old Phelps County Courthouse, and Mark began discussing the role that Raul played in the Civil War. Well, in southern, let's put it this way, in southern hands, Missouri was not a part of the Confederacy, but they were in southern hands. And then in June of 1861, a trainload of federal troops came down from St. Louis and ran off the southerners and 
for the rest of the war, while it was in Union hands, they built Fort Wyman on the hill to the south of here, from Fort Getty up on campus where Norwood Hall is now. And there were thousands of Union troops here at any one time, because this was the end of the railroad. That's where they unloaded railroad trains and put things on the wagon trains. So it was, a, it was a busy place and an important place. During the Civil War, there were some legendary historical figures here in Rolla. What up, Bill Hickok? And his, his brother, Alonzo, was uh, here. He worked for the Union Army as a wagon master. Wild Bill was a scout, and he would leave here and go off, probably into Arkansas, and then come back and report extremely dangerous work. But Wild Bill was the type, type of guy who could take care of himself, you know. So he was here during the war, and after, after the war, he was here for a brief period of time, he actually applied for a, a saloon keeper's license, but he, he moved out went down to Springfield, of course that's where he got in an argument with Dave Tutt. And the next morning, uh, are you familiar with Springfield at all? I am, I, there was a, that was quite a story involved with yeah. that one. So yeah, the, the town square there. Wild Bill was on one corner and Tutt was on the other. And Wild Bill plugged him right in my heart. <laughs> and, and the legend was born. And that's probably the only time in Wild West history that you actually had a shootout. Two guys facing each other, right at, you know, in the open. Like it happened in Gunsmoke every yeah, week, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like, like they want you to believe it happened every week. Right. And, uh, but it actually happened and it wasn't, wasn't in Tombstone, Arizona. It wasn't in Deep Montana. It was in Springfield, Springfield Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so he, before he became famous, he was actually here in Rolla then. Yeah, he, yeah. he was. He was becoming famous. He wasn't, his name wasn't Bill at all. He was James Butler Hickok. He was from Illinois, central, central Illinois. And, but he was uh, a big man for his, for his day, tall, well built, and seems to have his reputation as an incredible shot, which well earned. He really was an incredible shot. And uh, of course then he went from here up to Kansas to the cow towns up in Kansas, and then uh, and the luncheon grew. They were well, the the, the uh, dime novel writers from New York got a hold of his story, so he became pretty well known. Uh, appeared in Wild, appeared in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show for a while. It was terrible. Could not act. Stiff as a board. <laughs> you have to be the real thing. Yeah, go figure. They had the real thing right there and he was worthless. <laughs> so he, of course he ends up in Deadwood, South Dakota. And that's a shot in the back. Don't uh, sit. Yeah, yeah. Right in front of the door. Leaving the grieving widow, Calamity Jane, supposedly. <laughs> There's a good, uh, a writer named Joe Rosa who lives in England with He's written the definitive biographies of Wild Bill, and it's not easy. Because there's a lot of stories about what happened, right? The probably primary sources are probably a little scant. Yeah, who knows? I know that the, uh, in Springfield, he, he was brought to trial, and there his name was uh, rendered as Haycock, H-A-Y-C-O-K-C-K. Just the way things were in those days. Yeah. Now his brother, I don't know if he was known as Wild Bill yet. All we know is that his brother became known as Tame Bill. <laughs> Inevitably. <laughs> yeah. Phil, Sher Phil Sheridan. And uh, when he was here though, this was early in the war, he was a, a quartermaster, supply officer. we going crazy. And he eventually moved east and got Got the uh, got the eye of uh, Grant Sherman and became a famous first the, the only Union cavalry officer that consistently could hold the ground hold the ground with the Confederate cavalry. 
So, mm -hmm. and then after the war, he became, uh, I guess, what we would call uh, general of the army and chief of staff. So, long career. Lots of places named Sheridan. Every, every mm -hmm. time you see a Sheridan, S H E R I D A N. That's who it is. The Phelps County Historical Society has artifacts from all time periods in Rolla history. For example, Mark and Melody showed me a World War I uniform that was provided to a would-be soldier heading off for service in Europe. This is Walter Snelson's World, World War, War I, I uniform. We just finished the World War I centennial. And that was his uniform. He, he was a Rolla boy, a Phelps County boy. And uh, he got drafted went to Camp Funston in Kansas and trained and probably to his great benefit the war ended. <laughs> We're gonna And what year did he uh, but, huh? Do you know what year he went he went in overseas? Well he went in and my, he never went overseas. Oh wow, okay that's nice. Yeah, he never went overseas. He would have gone into service in 1917 and that came out in 1918. Yeah. But this is his actual uniform. Wow. And now, two years ago, we, we found where St. James and Newburgh wrote letters home, and the newspapers printed the letters from the soldiers. Uh, they're interesting. We had two newspapers. You gotta remember that at this time, not only had these boys, they might have been to St. Louis. Now they're in Paris, France. Yeah. What a huge change in about a year yeah. for them. Yeah. But this, this is kind of faded now. Supposedly this picture, this is the last group of draftees. They're in front of us now the library, that was at the post office. And supposedly, the, the, of course the railroad is just a block away. Supposedly they're going to ride up to get out of the train and they got the word. No, never mind. The war is over. The war is over. <laughs> Preserving the historic buildings and artifacts that are related to Rolla history and presenting them in a way that is beneficial to the community requires both the interest of the public and financial support. If you are interested in joining the Phelps County Historical Society, Melody explains how to sign up. As you know or heard from Mark's conversation, that the Phelps County Historical Society is self-funded. That means we, um, our income and maintenance for these buildings all come through membership and private donation. If you would like to become a member and join us in the society, the cost, the membership donation is requested at $15 per annum. And all other donations are used, those monies are used for the preservation and maintenance of the Dillon Log House, the original jail, and the old courthouse. Um, you're welcome to come here. You can uh, send us an email um, or visit our website. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. I hope this presentation has enriched your sense of Rolla's history and of the great work that the Phelps County Historical Society is doing to preserve and teach about the history of our community. 